Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be on the log for shell mitigation steps. Um, a couple of points, this isn't the only way to mitigate, this is just one option. Uh, this is the option you would use when you can't simply take the existing log4j, the latest version 2.16, 2.17, whatever the latest version is at the time of watching this video, you can't just simply drop that into your existing project. So in some cases you'll be able to do that if you're using you have the build environment, you're using the latest version of Java, you just drop in your new thing, update your, your uh, project file, rebuild, and you're good to go. Sometimes you're using an older version of Java, or for whatever reason you can't use the 2.16 or greater. Um, so the best option, if you can, is simply to go to that site, the Apache download page, you can see it here, download the latest version, extract the relevant jar files that you need for your project and then copy them into the folder and then rebuild. But we're going to go over the example where you can't do that for whatever reason. I'm going to show you two ways of mitigating it. It's the exact same way. One is going to be doing it using Windows and the other one's going to do it using Linux just so that you can understand what to do. So the first thing we need to do is find if we have this problem, if we have this log j. Now I'm not going to go into the details of what the vulnerability is or how it works. There's people who've already made videos on that. I will link to some of them at the end of this video. Suffice it to say, you want to determine whether or not a certain machine has log 4j, is, has the potential vulnerability, and then you want to remove it, make sure that it can't execute. So let's take a look at, at an example Linux box that I have just as a test. For this example we have, we're on a Linux box, I'm shelled into it. First we want to find any instances of log4j. So what I've done is I've moved to the root directory of the machine and I have root access. So I'm going to do a find and I'm going to search for the words log4j. And that's basically going to search all the drives from root looking for any instances of log4j and then it's going to return them. So we can see here some examples of log4j. Now a lot of these you can see have the version number 1.2.16, 1.2, 1 1.0. I'm going to ignore anything that's less than version 2. So here we can see a couple that are 2.6.2, 2.6.2. So let's focus on those. What you want to do is you want to let the system do the entire scan and finish. And each of these are the files that you're going to want to investigate further and potentially mitigate or patch. So I'm going to stop the scan for now just because I have one that I want to do as an example. And we'll go to the folder where we know where that is. So let's say this is an example of a jar file. Now what you're looking for is the log4j, the word core, dash core, and then a version number that starts with 2, 2.6, 2.2, 2.4. It could go anywhere up to 2.15. That's a file that potentially has the vulnerability. Now to be safe, rather than modify this file directly, I'm going to copy that file and I'm going to put it into a temp directory and that's where I'm going to do the modification. And that's just to make sure that nothing goes wrong or if something goes wrong, I can easily reverse it back out. So let's go back to that temp directory. Again, you can see that's where I copied the file. Now the command I'm going to use is zip because jar files are nothing more than zip compressed files. They just have the extension .jar. So I can use the command zip and I'm going to want to delete a file. That's the minus D. Then I have to specify which file that I want to modify. So again, that's the log4j core 2.6.2. And then I'm going to put the location of where I know the file is inside the jar that I want to delete. So we know from looking at other examples that this spot is in org apache logging log 4j core lookup jindy lookup class so what this is, command is going to do it's going to delete that one file from that jar so then you can see that you can see that it deleted it if you were to actually look at the details of the file now you would see that it's a little bit smaller than it was because it's deleted that jindy lookup now this is essentially a mitigated file that you can copy in place of the file that you had in your other location. Now one problem with this is if any of your logging happens to use the Jindy lookup lookup class, which it probably won't, but if you happen to have that, it could, could cause things to fail because it will try to do that uh, lookup inside the message, which is what the whole vulnerability is. We don't want that to be able to happen. So we remove the class so that can't happen, but code that tries to access the cl class might crash or throw a runtime error. Once I know I patched the file, I'm going to copy that file back to my prod location where it was. So let's go back to the prod directory and let's just move that file 
and give it a name of backup for now. Again, this is just in case I ever need to go back to it or look at it or do something again. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to copy that new patch file into that prod location where I found it. So again, if I go back to my prod location and I look at the files, you can see that in the files is the jar, which is a little bit smaller with the removed uh, bad file, that Jindy class, and the backup file, which was the original file that if I need to go back to, I can. So now you basically have a patch spot. Once you verified everything's working, you can certainly delete that backup file, um, and that's the mitigation if you're in a Linux box. Next we'll go and I'll show you how you would do that in Windows. Okay, so let's run through the example except for a Windows system with log4j. So similar to what we did before, we're going to do a search on our local drive for all instances of log4j. So if I go to my C as an example, I want to search. I'm going to type log4j and I'm going to hit search. Okay, so now once your search results are completed, you can see you're going to return all the different types of log4j text in it. You're going to specifically look through that for ones that have the format log4j a dash API, and then a number, two point something. So you can see I see several here. Here's a 2.14. Here's a 2.8.1. If we scroll down a little further, we'll see a 2.6. And then there's other ones that'll go 1.7. So I'm not worried about anything under two. I'm looking for two point something or greater. And these are files that I'm going to apply my mitigation to. So I'm just going to pick on one, but you basically have to repeat this for every location that you find. So let's pick on this one, log 2.12.2. So I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to say open file locations version. I'm going to make a backup of that. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put it in this temp folder. And that's the one I'm going to work on. Okay. Now again, jar files are just zip files. So I should be able to open this up with any zip program. Now you'll notice that I don't see the extension here, .jar. If you do see it, great, you can skip this step. If you don't see it, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into change folder and search options under view, and you're gonna check hide, you're gonna uncheck this, hide extensions for known file types. That way it will show you the .jar. And the reason for that is we're gonna rename the file, right click and rename, and we're gonna to add to it a .zip. And that will allow our zip program to easily open it. So what happens when you click OK on that, you're going to get a warning saying this might cause problems opening the file. That's OK. You're just going to say yes. And it's going to change the little icon to a zip folder. So that's going to allow us to double click on it and then see the inside of that file. Again, it's just like a zip file. You're going to go into org. You're going to go into Apache. You're going to go into logging. You're going to go into log4j. You're going to go into core. And you're going to go into lookup. And you're going to look for this file called JNDI lookup class. See, it's right there. You're going to select it, and then you're going to hit delete. So you can right click on that if you want and choose delete. And that's going to remove it from that zip file. If I go back then to the actual file, you can see there it is. And the file size has become a little smaller. I'm going to remove the .zip and make it back to a jar file the way it was before I started anything. And then I'm going to overwrite the file that was in my prod folder. So again, in my prod folder, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to make a backup. I'll go copy that file that I modified and I'll put it in my prod folder. And again, you can see that the new jar is a little bit smaller because we deleted that one file. That's a backup in case I ever need to go back. But then you can test using that file. <coughs> Once you know everything is done, you can remove the backup. So again, this is how you can mitigate by removing that Jindy class from a jar file, whether it's in Windows or whether it's in Linux, replacing that file. There are other methods that can mitigate the log for shell. Um, particularly the best method you can do is to put the latest 2.16 or 2.17 jar file, but if that doesn't work, this is how you can remove it uh, from the actual jar file altogether so that it can't get executed by accident.